In the days of Seth, the Bible says that men began to call upon the name of the Lord. Men began to call upon the name of the Lord. Some time ago when we were on campus, it's like 20, 20 something years ago now, and a group of people decided to come together to begin to pray every night. And we chose 12 midnight as the prayer time. And that's the, for those of you that were on campus then, you will know what I'm talking about. 12 midnight. The most difficult time to pray was the time we chose so that it would be a sacrifice. The mortals are not impressed by normal things. You need to go beyond your capacity as a man in order to gain the attention of spirits. So we decided to make the prayer that most impossible time of the day, 12 midnight. So we pray from 12 to 1. And what I do is that I read, study, do all stuff, just waiting for the prayer time. People waited for it. People anticipated it. And we began to pray. When we began to gather momentum in the place of prayer, at some point, our petition, our supplication, our intercession, began to affect the alignment of principalities, of thrones within the territory, exacting government. We never knew what we were doing. We were just novices that loved the Lord and wanted to ventilate ourselves in the presence of God. But unfortunately for us, even though we did not know, some things began to shake. The alignment of the spiritual structure of the place felt the heat and the impact of what we were making available. Hallelujah. One of those days we were praying and security people came and arrested us. That is secular. A secular came out. A secular that we are yet to see till today. But generations after we left school, that they, they are still implementing uh, uh, the, the policy, the implementing the directive of that secular. It has not come. It's yet to come out. They say there is a secular. It's a secular on the campus that people should stop praying in the night. It's an act of terrorism. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. We didn't go. We said death. Death will be the result of this meeting. So when they saw that we were speaking as if we, had, we were drunk, <coughs> the security people had to leave us alone. And we continued the prayers. Continued the prayers. Continued the prayers. A time came because the first set of people we were praying with that were my seniors graduated. So we were now saddled with the responsibility of pushing the prayer fire. We prayed for like three, two sessions. That's two academic years. Two sessions. Something happened. 5 a.m. in the morning. It rained that night, so sleep was very sweet. After we finished the 12 midnight prayer, I, I stationed my own prayer for 5 a.m. in the morning. My own personal prayer. So rain fell. And sleep was sweet because there was the, 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 the once very hot land was chilled with good breeze. I woke up by 5 o'clock. The Holy Ghost woke me up. But I saw the breeze and I went back to sleep. Then something happened. The angel of the Lord, he held my hand like this. Then when I woke up, he removed the hand. I went back to sleep. He held the hand again. When I woke up, he removed the hand. I went back again. Then he held my hand this time. When I woke up, the hand still held me until we reached prayer room. 5 a.m. in the morning. The place was dark. He held my hand till we reached. In fact, I was so afraid to look at the hand. Whether when he held it, you could see that some of the flesh pressed in. I, was, I didn't bother to. I just... To. And what the Lord was saying was that you people have been disturbing me for two years. You can't say you will sleep now. That was the day the Holy Spirit gave me a hug. It came like a wind. My, my encounter with power began that day. Yes. That was when my eyes... Now, in the build-up of what we are... You know, prayer is not... People don't like prayer. God, they say, God, these people now, they'll be doing like... <laughs> but there is a day that your investment in prayer will attract heaven's visitation. May you not be sleeping that day. 5 a.m. in the morning. And that's what the Lord told me. Because I... Aboho. The Abuho that I told you about yesterday, he failed me in his course. So I had an extra year. God, that was where he spoke to me that night. I'm giving you something this night that your mates that graduated 
and left before you we never have this is 20 something years from the time that word was like 17 years from the 17 or thereabout years from the time that word was where why 2k now that's 18 years 18 years now and what he said we have I'm, i have seen it now it's true it was not less true 18 years ago the holy spirit hugged me and you know what we prayed for two academic sessions but in the day when he came to hug i was the only one that was in the prayer room those were prayer meetings we held sometimes there were 40 people sometimes 37 we prayed wild tongues that the, the security their delicate balance was disrupted they tried to stop the civilization but the day all our initiatives attracted heaven's attention and heaven decided to deploy a personnel I was the only one in the prayer. Maybe that was when I received mercy from heaven. Many things I don't know. But there's one thing I know. I will never stop praying. I made many mistakes, but this one was one thing I got right. People in my family say, you will never amount to anything. People say, if you take this road, you will not arrive. All their words were lies. My uncle brought a herbalist, put in one of the rooms, lodged in one of the rooms in his house. If you want to collect money from him, you go to the herbalist, he will bless you with, with marine powers. Then he will not give you money. And I said, it's better for me to beg on the streets than to receive this kind of money. So he said I was a proud man and I was going to suffer. 20 years later, I sent 200,000 to pay his daughter's school fees. I traveled from Makoli to Abuja. Then, how many of you were in Abuja when they used that, uh, there's a park in Nyanya. That's where you enter Makoli car. Do you know? And that time. From Makoli to, from Nyanya to Makoli was 300 naira. I traveled from here, 300 naira, to go and see my uncle. To give him money to pay school fees. He gave me 400 naira. And the, the journey back will require what? So I had to enter Lozero's bus. So when we reached the bridge, the conductor slapped. I was sleeping. They, you know what the Bible calls sleeping for sorrow? That, you are not sleeping. No. You, are, you, are, you, are, you are wedged by sorrow. <laughs> just, he slapped my head and said, your money, don't finish. Come on. On the bridge. Yeah, this bridge. Yeah. So I began to train. I saw life robbery that night. They were breaking it. I checked from that place to second gate. Fifteen years later, I was driving my car past the same spot, and it was Highlander. Same spot. Same spot where I was left. They dropped me there twelve midnight. Fifteen years later, I was driving past. I saw the same spot. The God that we serve is a faithful God. I defied all the laws of my family. All. And according to the tradition of our village, if you do that, you will die suddenly. They waited 10 years to see me die. And in 10 years time, I broke forth. It was proven that the all time my village dead no longer has any power over me. Hallelujah. Guess what? It was when I preached the gospel that my uncle gave his life to Christ. That's the eldest in the family now. And he told me, let's destroy the altars. And I'm, I'm glad to announce to you that I will still be in the team of people that will put an end to that 43 generation civilization of darkness that was transferred from generation. The altar had no power over me. They will never tell you to not to marry from another tribe but if you do nobody will support you so i save money a million for my marriage because i know nobody will support me. it was that money i saved that god said i should go and sow it i think that's the last straw that broke the camel's back he saw that i would serve him it was clear the altar had no power over me before this conference ends there are many of you that the holy ghost will hug Do you, do you know something since, the, since that hog I have not successfully 
been able to be discouraged since that time. Since that time. My wife knows it's hard for me to cry. Tear tears. The sorrow doesn't it doesn't reach deep. I received a hug from the Holy Ghost. Something I cannot really explain. But years have come and gone. I think two decades have passed. And I've seen it's better to have covenant with God. There was a man in my family. Every Friday he comes home with Ghana must go of money. I realized that all my cousins, my relatives, that were going to collect that money, their destiny stagnated. I never knew why God said, don't go there. I suffered for 10 years. The suffering, <laughs> I know you will not believe. Because of the suffering, I started a fasting project because there was actually nothing available. So we had to convert it to something that has spiritual value. Yeah. You say you are suffering. You have not suffered. I had to convert the poverty, convert the trouble. Those days, I know you will not believe. I was staying in Kano. I can use 800 naira for one week. <laughs> hey. Going to work, I will come back. I know where to drop. Where to drop on the bike. Huh? <laughs> There's a spot. It will, it will subsidize your, your expenditure. Then you track the rest and speak in tongues. I converted everything to, to spiritual points. I converted the trekking to spiritual points. Converted the poverty to fasting points. I, after a while, it became obvious that Satan could not break this man. That, what was responsible for my hardship were the spirits that came from that altar. But I decided I would not serve darkness. Why? It was easy because the Holy Ghost hugged me. Yes, yes, there was abject poverty outside. In fact, when the devil got angry, my two trousers, they stole one. Thank God it was black. It could, any shirt could go on it. Any shirt could go on it. I still had, oh my, you need to see the way I used to. When I talk in with black, I, I come out. Huh. I am a candy. At some point, it became evident that this man will not serve the devil. Though he, he be slain, yet he will not serve Satan. Though he be cut off. This, those were the days when my uncles come home with Ghana, Moscow. I never knew that everybody that drank from that well, they, they did that at the expense of the rising of their star. Now, now let me tell you, it's better for you to suffer today. You know the Bible says in all these things. It didn't, it didn't say outside of these things. It say inside of them. I am more than a conqueror. There was ventilation inside of my spirit. Yes, there was poverty on the outside. But there was so much riches in my spirit. That I could not afford to be downcast. And when I went to the mount, There's a place I used to pray. Whenever I entered that place to pray. And I say Jesus. That's my prayer point too. I will say that Jesus for three hours. It, as I'm saying it, I'm being sucked into the spirit. Because there, there were no words for me to articulate the prayer that can carry the burden I was bearing. So I just cry out, Jesus. For, uh, uh, then I find out for three hours I was just saying, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And it came to pass in the city of Canaan. Now the Lord instructed that we should hold a crusade. It was my youth service, last allowance for my youth service that was what was used to do that crusade. I was on the crusade ground. Hallelujah. On that crusade ground. <laughs> Ministering the last night. I never knew that the Muslims around are taking note of me. For evil. Taking note of me. And then we're doing the crusade. And then while I was preaching, the imam of that area had a lunatic daughter. Mad girl. I even want to talk to her. And as I was preaching, the lunatic lady began to come to the altar. Mm -hmm. And you know, she's very violent. The, the ushers knew the lady, but I, I did not know her. So when she, she navigated towards the crusade ground, I was expecting the protocol to protect the altar. Then I found out I was alone. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> Glory to God. I could not see any usher in sight to bring order. And she marched. And if not that I had stopped her, she would have climbed the pulpit to meet me. So I came down. As I came down, she welcomed me with what we call a slap offering. 
And unfortunately for me, the cameraman that was, did not film her coming. Began to film actively when the slap offering was communicated. <laughs> Do you know those things they draw in cartoons that people see stars? It's true. I saw many stars. And I was even amazed that I was still on my feet. <laughs> I, was, I was a creature of fasting. So I was still amazed that after that salutation, I was still standing on my feet. And the cameraman was active to film it. He said, we've never captured such things on camera. <laughs> and you know what? The Holy Ghost, he hugged me again. After a long time. It was after the hug came that I spoke to the lunatic spirit. And she was lifted off the ground, thrown by the side. And she, she was lying there. I continued preaching. That was the day I preached for the first time in my life. 500 people gave their life to Christ. And at the end of the crusade, we were, that lady rose up in her right mind. Yes. That was what made the people that the imam sent. Eh? When they saw his daughter. Yes. He, he sent a signal. You will not believe, but I need to tell you. That imam contributed money for our crusade. Then I knew that Jesus was not only real in the secret. If you hold him in the secret, he will come out and hug you in the marketplace. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. As you go tonight, go under the shadow. Go under the shadow. Go under the shadow tonight. When we went to the village, the last barrier we went, we now cost the altar. You no longer draw human worship. And the spirit that gives you life is hereby bound. Anybody that rises to raise your memory will die with the attempt of building you up. So one of my uncles tried to so they left it. If you know how long that civilization has existed, you will not believe that a small boy can change that part. It's not of him that will it. It's not of him that run it. But it is of God that showed mercy. Oh, there are many things we cannot legislate. There are many things we cannot understand. One of which is the mercy of God. It's in the secret place that secret things are unveiled. And only a man of heaven can open the windows of heaven.